Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, Fractal Bitcoin. What's up? Welcome to today's Bitcoin news video. I'm Chris. Let's get right to it. Here's the Bitcoin chart. Right now we're sitting at 69,683. And yeah, after our uh, big pump up on Monday, we've just been, you know, hanging around, you know, around 70 plus or minus 70,000. It's good. It's good that we're hanging here because it kind of indicates we're going to go higher. Uh, of course, it could always come lower. Of course, it could go sideways for the next five months. But it's okay. We're in this for the bull run. The next 18 months are going to be life-changing for sure. So let's get to the news articles. Today, of course, happy Bitcoin pizza day. Laszlo made the first real-world transaction on May 22nd, 2010, using Bitcoin to purchase two Papa John's pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoin. Those 10,000 Bitcoins are now worth $701 million today. <laughs> Look, and you know, I, I talk about this with other people. We, it, we can't even relate to this, like 2010, paying 10,000 Bitcoin for two pizzas. Like we, we can't relate. So it, 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 it's too hard to relate. I mean, you know what I mean? Like you can't you can't say, "Oh, he should have held on to them because he should have known they were going to be worth 700 million." No way. It was a different world back then. But anyway, it's still fun. Yeah, and here's uh Bitcoin and pizza. In 2010 for 10,000 Bitcoin you get two pizzas. In 2017 for one Bitcoin you get 81 pizzas. And in 2024, for one Bitcoin, you get around 2,800 pizzas, right? And what, what is it going to be in the future? So that's the thing I wanted to mention. You know how it's impossible for us to relate to 2010? Well, imagine 14 years from now, in 2038, when Bitcoin is worth like $57 million per Bitcoin or more. You're, we're not going to be able to relate to, you know, this price here, right? $70,000? Oh, what do you mean? If I knew it was going to go to $57 million per Bitcoin, yeah, yeah, you get it. It's, you can't do that. It's, it's, Bitcoin is, Bitcoin bends time. It bends reality in a way. It's fascinating. Yeah, and here's Mandrick saying, don't celebrate Laszlo for spending Bitcoin for pizza. Celebrate Jeremy Sturdivant for accepting Bitcoin as payment. Happy Bitcoin Pizza Day. That's true. That guy, Jeremy, he, he received the 10,000 Bitcoin. All right, but look, Coinbase. Ugh, Coinbase is uh, sus in many ways, even though a lot of us use Coinbase or have used Coinbase. But anyway, look, this is the news for today. Coinbase is celebrating Bitcoin Pizza Day by sending dollars on the Ethereum blockchain. Yes, this is real, right? This is from Coinbase. They're celebrating how far crypto has come since 2010. Crypto? What? Welcome to the Coinbase Pizza Truck. $1 USDC slices. What? Payment is as easy as pie. What? Washington Square Park. Yeah, so they're literally accepting USDC, which is over the Ethereum blockchain on Bitcoin Pizza Day. Yeah, all right, a little out of touch. Yeah, and here's, yeah, uh, PubKey. It's a pub. They're celebrating Bitcoin Pizza Day from 3 to 5 p.m. They're right near Washington Square Park. And so it says, you know, free pizza in Washington Square Park at 1.30, which it's our, this is already passed, I think. And then, yeah, pub pies and beer at pub key starting at three. Yeah, pub key is, you know, it's a pub that accepts Bitcoin and they're celebrating Bitcoin Pizza Day. I love it. Now, here's some wisdom from Walker. With fiat, the things you want to buy get more expensive forever. With Bitcoin, the things you want to buy get cheaper forever. Really, this is absolutely true. This is how Bitcoin is upending the whole world. The whole, every fiat system in the world is, Bitcoin is going to devour it. And here's Willie Wu reporting that total inflows into the Bitcoin network starting to moon again. 
yeah, here are the inflows. And he says, light green is the net flows from spot ETFs. And this chart tracks the seven-day moving average. So yeah, you could see, uh, what do you say? The light green is the ETF. So yeah, that's coming up. But in general, inflows are coming up. So this is very bullish, very bullish. And BlackRock, their Bitcoin ETF finally overtakes Grayscale officially for the most assets under management. So yeah, these are the, you know, the ETF holders. You have iBit right here which is BlackRock, and now GBTC is lower than them. Don't forget, GBTC started out way ahead of everyone. They had like 650,000 Bitcoin when all these other guys had zero. And they, and a lot of the GP, GBTC users, probably half of that, you know, at least probably three 300,000 Bitcoin or 350,000 Bitcoin, the people who held the GBTC sold it and then, you know, all these other guys, all these other institutions, their customers have been buying it. So now GBTC is finally down under BlackRock. And again, this is just news, right? It doesn't, what does it mean? It doesn't mean much. It, I mean, the ETF's there. People are going to invest in it. It's fine. Yeah. All right. This is a great video. Jack Mallers. He goes off on the crypto nonsense. And this is from Bloomberg TV. Uh, here's the quote, but we're going to watch a little bit of it. Bitcoin is the only money within crypto, within the cryptocurrency space. Ethereum is a technology. The market often conflates it with money. Yeah, Bitcoin's the only money, and Ethereum is a technology. So let's uh, watch the beginning of this, the first minute or so, because this is really good. Someone who's renewed to the Bitcoin scene and what he thinks about the Ethereum ETF as well. Strike CEO Jack Manners, always great to have you on the show. Thanks, Thanks for coming for in to the me. studio. You, of course, very much focused on functionality and building upon Bitcoin. What do you think, though, of a ETF yet more institutional money potentially coming into the smart contract side of the equation? Yeah, I'm not a fan of any other cryptocurrency outside of Bitcoin, but I think there is a hilarious story as to why this is happening. I mean, I was laughing out loud. It looks like someone went to Gary Gensler and said, hey, buddy, you're not in charge anymore. And you'd have to think why that was. It's because banks and Wall Street are making money, right? I, banks get a really bad deal in today's market is they have to buy bonds that are performing awfully. And all of a sudden, they get a free market in this independent crypto thing and they're actually making money these markets have life these markets go up when governments debase their currency these things perform well and they got a taste of bitcoin and it was the best performing product that they've ever had and they're like oh man how many other pieces of crap are there out there that we can list as etfs and i literally think that's what's happening it's a way better business to launch crypto etfs than it is to buy bonds right now uh, based on the macro environment. So I think someone said, hey, Gary, sorry, buddy. Uh, despite you thinking that these things are securities, we need to make money. And that's what happened. Well, it's funny that you bring up Gary again. Yeah, I, I really like his take here. I, that's got to be the truth, right? All these big banks and Wall Street guys are like, man, this crypto thing is gaining momentum and it's crazy. You know, the, the traditional fiat world is, is getting tougher and tougher. This new world of crypto is exciting and it, it has a lot of uh, people coming in, a lot of volatility because they love volatility. Anyway, this is a really good take. Thank you, Jack. And here's from Charles Gasparino. Breaking, if the SEC does approve the ETH ETF, it will be one of the biggest regulatory 180s in recent SEC history and proof that the crypto crowd is a legitimate voting bloc. Securities lawyers tell me all the guidance coming from Gary Gensler was that he was even going to declare ETH a security, which would have made it a complete no-go. But that's not what we're hearing now after people like John Deaton made their voices heard and, and Democrat, uh, Democrat lawyers heard them and got, glitterly, got glittery about losing the Senate. Again, don't believe anything until you see the press release, but if this is approved... This is a big deal. And yeah, this is a big, this is a 180. Like he says, the SEC, they've been suing Ethereum and other cryptos like Ethereum saying that they're a security. They're an unregistered security. But now all of a sudden, 
the ETH ETF might be approved lickety split. It's very weird. So not only is it because the bankers want to make money off crypto or Ethereum's initially, it's even the voting blocks, right? These politicians, even, you know, you saw Trump come out and say he's accepting crypto now. And um, others have too. But this is because it's going to influence the election. So it's funny how there's other forces coming in that are going to push Bitcoin and crypto sort of unfortunately into the mainstream. I mean, Bitcoin, yes, Bitcoin should be mainstream and the government should stay out of it. But anyway, they're going to try to play all their shenanigans with Ethereum and, and all the others. All right, now this is a great video. It's 10 minutes, so we're not going to watch it, but I'll link to it as I'll, I link to everything below. This is Michael Saylor explaining the many technical, economic, and ethical problems with Ethereum. There is no second best. Yeah, he, yeah, I watched this. He, yeah, this is really worth watching. Again, it's only, what, 10 minutes? Yeah, it's 10 minutes, so check that out. Uh, all right, if, you're, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, please do. And let's get into some fiat government nonsense for context because Bitcoin solves these issues. Let's start off with Prolific Joints. He's been saying it for over a year. Real inflation is well over 100% versus pre-COVID. Yeah, this I've, I saw this on uh, George on Cryptos R Us. Even Tim Pool brought up this exact issue. Uh, image here showing McDonald's price increases, Taco Bell price increases. I mean, the price increases are crazy. You know, a lot of times it's double or triple or at least 80%, 90%, 215%. So yeah, inflation is nuts. Everyone's trying to play it down, but they, I mean, look, reality is going to smack everybody in the face, right? The government and the media, they can say whatever they want. They could try to cover it up. That's fine. But it, regular people are going to get smacked across the face with this inflation, and it's going to be ugly. It's going to be ugly. Yeah, here's uh, this is really interesting. And I heard this years ago, and I really, it, it sounds true. Um, I, uh, this is a post here. I once had a friend who grew up in China ask me why so many Americans watch the news. Confused, I asked, what do you mean? She responded, well, in China, no one watches the news because we all know it's propaganda. I guess Americans haven't figured that out yet. Among the moments that completely changed my paradigm on life, this was one of them. Yeah, and this is, yeah, and I keep telling everyone I know, the mainstream corporate media, it's all propaganda. And I'm not exaggerating. I keep telling some people, well, my mom, I mentioned it to her, but she's... <laughs> sometimes people of a certain age like they're done not going to change them uh oh yeah here's something great this is unreal look at this in the new york times holding bitcoin the newest form of white privilege <laughs> oh retarded yeah oh yeah oh yeah baby oh yeah yeah i mean come on yeah, how bridging the gap of access inequality by redistribution is the only solution. Shut up. Again, propaganda. Look at this. They're trying to sow dissent among the people. Yeah, GFY, really. Yeah, here's Guy Swan saying they did it through the money. He's responding to this. Because uh, AKA Verity Reynolds says... I feel the need to explain something to the generation that does not remember or never saw a world where one person with a high school education could support a family of five comfortably. This was real for millions of United States families. It was normal. It was stolen from you. It was stolen from you. Guy Swan says they did it through the money. That's right, through inflation through inflation, really, and taxes and everything. Yeah. So this is what your government's doing to you. How do you feel about that? Here's some news. The U.S. economy is to crash in a hard landing recession, says Citigroup's chief U.S. economist. He wants four interest rate cuts this year. First of all, I don't know. I don't, I don't really um, give much credence to Citigroup's chief U.S. economist, but... Uh, but look, a lot of people are saying this, that the recession's coming and it's going to be bad. It's going to be worse than everybody thinks. 
because because the Biden idiot regime is saying that, oh, inflation's under control, everything's under control. Normal people, normies, they, they don't feel that something bad is coming, but it is. Yeah, and here's a great one. I just saw this. This is from the European Union. Ugh. Let yourself be monitored. The EU governments to agree on chat control with user consent. You know what this is? They're literally going to monitor your chats. Yeah, here we go. Specifically, according to the proposal, users of apps with a communication function would have to agree via terms and conditions or pop-up messages that all images and videos sent to others will be scanned automatically and possibly reported to the EU and the police. Oh, yeah. Here we go. They keep pushing it. They're going to push it unless we stop them. Unbelievable. What the F? Wow. All right, here's Bitcoin Archive saying, Democrats want to neutralize Bitcoin as an electoral issue. One, because there are millions of votes in it. And two, there are millions of dollars in it. Yeah, the first Bitcoin election is here. I like the way he puts that. The first Bitcoin election is here. Because Bitcoin, it seems like Bitcoin is going to play a role in this upcoming election. Right? Because voters are concerned about it. They want, voters, are, a lot of voters are pro-Bitcoin. I even see some people online saying that they're a one-issue voter, Bitcoin. If the candidate is against Bitcoin, they're not going to vote for him. If there's a candidate, candidate that's for Bitcoin, they're going to vote for them. That's it. Simple as that. Now here's Mr. Beast, the biggest YouTuber on the face of the planet, visiting Bitcoin country. Oh yeah, look at him. He's in El Salvador. I don't know what he's doing there, but yeah. He has 250 million subs. Man, I need to get cooking over here. Yeah. Anyway, that's awesome. He's visiting El Salvador, Bitcoin country. Love it. Uh, and here's a little note to er everybody. Uh, memo to whoever has been sending, <laughs> sending in the clowns. <laughs> you can stop now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really? Dude. Memo to who's ever been sending in the clowns. You can stop now. Oh, I love it. All right. Now here, if you're ever feeling lonely... You ever need to say hi to somebody? You just want to connect and say hi? Here you go. You could just watch this uh, video on repeat. Here you go. This is this is a frog just waving hi continuously. It's great. <laughs> what is he doing? It's awesome. I love it. All right. Well, this is our website, fractalbitcoin.com. Click this link on the top. Join our locals community. And come over here to our locals. It's free to join and we're, we're growing it. It's awesome. And don't forget, every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, we do the Bitcoin panel live stream. Yeah, I invite a bunch of Bitcoiners, and we talk Bitcoin, and it's awesome. Every Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, follow the channel, and like the video and all that. I really appreciate all your positive comments, and, uh, and I even appreciate you trolls, actually. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, well, I'll see you tomorrow for tomorrow's Bitcoin news video. All right, see ya. Happy Bitcoin pizza day. Bye.